Well, good Saturday to you. Thanks for finding us here at Fox 26. I'm meteorologist John Dawson, and this is our tropical update, which we're here every day of hurricane season, whether it's quiet in the Atlantic Basin or whether it's a circus like what we're seeing right now out in the Atlantic with all sorts of things happening and doing just unusual activities. We're going to have to dive into this. The good news is each new run of our computer models are showing less direct impacts on the continental US. So that's all good to report, but we're not out of the woods yet. There's certainly plenty of questions to still be asked about what these two tropical cyclones are going to be doing out in the Atlantic. So this very clear, very well defined hurricane is a category five Umberto. We're going to give you some more stats on it here in just a minute, but there's a much more of a mess of a tropical cyclone here moving through the Bahamas right now, and this one is headed directly towards the southeast corner there of the US. As of right now, though, it looks like a direct landfall is not what we're going to expect, but it doesn't take a direct landfall to definitely have impacts, and we certainly know that there will be some impacts, and I'll go through some of those possibilities and what the scenarios are and maybe what could or couldn't happen. But as I mentioned, each computer run is looking a little bit better right now with some of our concerns. So here's what I was talking about with the melt. So technically this is tropical depression nine, so it doesn't have a high enough wind speeds that have been recorded uh, or recognized to be a tropical storm yet. So remember a tropical storm is when it gets its name. And again, it will be a Melda right now. It is nine. It is tropical depression nine. If you heard the term potential tropical cyclone nine, it's the same system. It's just sort of changed in its organization and it now can be called a cyclone. In this fact, in this case, it is a tropical depression. That's what type of cyclone that it is. We do have hurricane hunters that are are currently flying through this system right now. There's actually two. The Air Force Hurricane Hunters are the ones that are flying directly through looking for that center of circulation. They're sort of a lower altitude, again, moving right through the middle, the most middle parts they can find, looking for those winds, looking for that uh, low pressure system that's happening. And then there's also a NOAA aircraft, which is, I'm not exactly sure what uh, uh, aircraft that actually is, but it's a jet and it's smaller and it's flying much higher in the upper levels of the atmosphere and it's kind of zooming around this system a little bit more looking for data that would help kind of indicate what's feeding the system and what's steering the system. So again, two different uh, aircrafts are currently flying this cyclone trying to get as much data as we can on it right now because this is the one that's certainly going to have impacts on the well currently on the Bahamas, uh, but as well as it moving into the continental US. So back out to Umberto real quick. It is continuing to intensify. Uh, it is a currently a category five hurricane. Let's get the latest stats here as we've got the 4 p.m. update. So again, this is Saturday. 4 p.m. Sorry, I didn't mention that earlier. If you were trying to figure out what uh, the information we're dealing with here, Saturday 4 p.m. update starting to really get that pressure down about 925 millibars. Winds now up to 160 miles an hour. Going to maintain that category five strength here for another day or so and then eventually begin to weaken somewhat. And notice how it's not expected to get too close to the US to really have direct impacts, but it will be continuing to stay somewhat close to Imelda, and there's certainly the possibilities that they'll start interacting slightly together. I don't think they're going to get close enough together that they have dramatic impacts on them where that Fujiwara effect takes a place, which I'm, I'm sure you've heard a lot of folks talking about how those start spinning around each other if they get too close. I don't think we're going to go full blown Fujiwara on this thing, but it will certainly uh, have some interactions with each other and the rest of the steering components that are happening around us in the Atlantic or around them in the Atlantic. So here's our exclusive Fox weather model. This is the only model that I'm going to show you an animated model that I'm going to show you. Uh, we'll look at some rainfall uh, expectations here in a minute as well, but I just kind of want to lay this out so you can see what's happening again. Here's Umberto. Here's what will be Amelda. Notice how this system getting pretty close to Florida, and that's why we do have tropical storm watches 
in effect for parts of the Florida coast. So that's most that's directly based on winds that are expected. Tropical storm watch. That's going to be what we're seeing right along the coast here. And you'll see this getting better organized. We're on Sunday evening, so tomorrow evening we move a little further. Again, these are not getting too close to each other. We have some upper level jet stream that's going to start pulling uh, Umberto even further out. We've got we've got uh, Imelda, what will be Imelda, kind of falling, not falling apart, but stalling, losing its forward momentum, maybe even just parked here for a time period. That's going to be a problem with rainfall because it'll just sit here and churn and push rain up along the coastline there. You'll also have your storm surge impacts possibility, the other marine threats that are there, such as the surf uh, and the erosion, those sorts of things, but certainly going to be uh, expect to be a hurricane when we get to Tuesday or so. We'll move forward here into Wednesday, and you'll notice how now we start to see this system pulling out into the Atlantic. But it's not just going to pull up and make a right turn and whip it. It's going to pull in and kind of slow down a little bit and then finally get moving out into the Atlantic. We'd like it to go a lot faster. Or the other thing we would like is for that right turn to start taking place earlier instead of Wednesday. If we could start up on Tuesday, that would be another fantastic option as well. And there's just got to have some questions here. We're not a high confidence in exactly where that track's going to go or how fast it's going to happen. But this is the official track from the National Hurricane Center. So again, we've got a lot of confidence in those experts that are out there working and putting this together. And you'll notice that right now we, we like to focus on the entire cone. We don't want to get too focused on this center line. I know it's very natural to do that, and, and that's what our instincts are. But remember, we, we want to say that really this center of circulation could be all the way as far to the west as what we're seeing here with our cone, right? Okay, and it could even be further out as well. So it, this right turn could start taking place earlier. It could start taking place later, but we do see that start to happen. But when you start getting these icons that are so close to each other, that indicates slowing down. We like to see when they're spread apart because that's a time difference. Each time it, we, we mark it with our icon, it moves a lot further. Well, when they're in here tight like this, that's that extreme slowing down process. Right now, the Hurricane uh, Center is saying that it'll be Tuesday early morning when it becomes a hurricane. We're not as concerned extremely about the winds as much as we are about this rainfall that's coming with it. So right now, this is kind of one of our expectations as far as the rain, how much rain will fall through Thursday. So if it sort of stays on its current track, you'll notice that there are some high amounts of rain, but it doesn't reach far inland and the highest of those rains still stay offshore. So that's kind of good, kind of like we like it right now. I expect this to change some. It's not going to be locked into place. But we'll see this modify a little bit. Again, if it goes further to the north, all the rain will go further north and a little further to the northwest. If that track is further closer to the coast, all that rain gets taken a little bit closer to the coast. If the stall takes a little bit longer, well, then we'll get even more rain that's kind of falling. The good news here is that if you'll remember last year when Helene went inland and dropped so much rain and caused so much destruction across parts of the Carolinas. It doesn't look like this type of rain is going to reach those same areas. So things are definitely looking better at the moment, at least for those parts of the Carolinas as well. So as far as the flood risk goes right now, we've already got watches from the Weather Prediction Center. This is obviously going to change and increase. These only go out for three days, so this only goes out to Monday. This is going to get ramped up a lot higher as far as the flash flood risk goes once we get into Tuesday. I do just kind of want to point out that the water temperature is going to be something to note as the track is concern as it tracks over warmer waters. We look for that intensification to happen a little bit quicker. Right now, these are certainly warm enough to reach up to that hurricane strength. But if things sort of slide out a little bit, notice we're here along the coast about 84 degrees, but a little bit further out, we're more like 82, but maybe closer into 80 or 81. We want that to happen. If we can keep it a little bit further out, then that will have less likeliness that the intensity would be ramped up as well. But if it sneaks in a little closer to the coast, 
It's got a little bit more fuel to work with. So I hope I've made it clear. We've got an idea. We've got a plan of what's happening. Some of the finer details still have to kind of unfold exactly how far that rain is going to make it, the winds, that track, etc. So that's why we need you to check back in tomorrow. There'll be some minor tweaks and differences. I want to update with you with those, but if we have some minor tweaks and changes every day, then in, in you know four days from now, things could look a little bit different than they do right now. But certainly we're beginning to get a little bit more confidence that a direct landfall is not going to be happening with Imelda, but we certainly do expect impacts and those impacts could change slightly over the next several days. So let's stay connected. We'll see you back here again tomorrow with the latest on the tropics.